Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being there once again. This is Rafa with Mystic Times. I'm very happy that you have decided to join me. Today, I'm very happy to meet a new friend. Um, I already know we're going to have a great time with, with Lindsay, um, even, even though we, we don't know each other yet so much. Uh, but today is going to be a fantastic episode. One of the, the topics that I, I would like to cover or the, the notes that I took about what, what I would like us to speak a little bit about is radionics, orgone energy, and reality creation. So let's let's see how how we can uh, uh, add a, a grain of sand onto that uh, conversation, maybe. And um, so, yeah, I'm very happy to, to have Lindsay on. Uh, I met her or, or got to know her through Emily, who's been on the show several times already. She's one of the, the most... Uh, uh, recurring guests and um, yeah I'm very happy to have her here so without further ado welcome Lindsay Charmin to Mystic Times how are you? Oh thank you I'm so good thank you for having me Rafa it's nice to be able to get to know you and uh, talk about these awesome subjects you have picked out for us today. Fantastic I'm happy that you like them so tell me um, what what made you what made you maybe say yes to my invitation? Uh, you just have a really good energy and, uh, you know, you approach it very directly and honestly, and, and that's really refreshing. Um, a lot of people try to, I don't know, a lot of people are a little bit more like sneaky or manipulative, or they're not just like upfront with what they want. And I, I can't work with that type of energy. So, um, oh, wow. you know, so you're just, you just have an inviting uh, energy and a very uh, straightforward way of saying what you would like and what you need. And so I like, I appreciate those things. Well, great. Thank you. I, I really like uh, learning learning about those those things. You know, sometimes it's hard to like uh, make an, uh, an an assessment of, of oneself. You know, because you're you're so used to being the way that you are. So yeah, okay. hearing I, I couldn't imagine what what well, we don't need, need to get into that. But I couldn't imagine that people would would go about uh, like getting getting you like on a podcast, maybe in a in a sneaky way or or inviting weirdly i mean i don't know i don't even yeah. know where, where i would start doing that i actually I, <laughs> I actually i uh for for me i uh i follow gary v you know it's not like my 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 top guy necessarily but he has some very very good um uh, uh, what to call it uh, suggestions or, or stuff like that that he shares uh, he's maybe from a, a kind of a little bit of a different kind of energy. He's more more hyper or or more more uh, not aggressive, but more masculine, like fiery energy. And I'm a little bit more relaxed, more more. I'm an Aquarius with a Scorpio moon, so I'm, I'm a little bit more more relaxed. I, although I do have like, some fire, but yeah. <laughs> uh, he listening to him. There was one time where he kind of gave a kind of a formula for for how to, to email people with invitations to podcast. And he gave, he, at least for me, he gave me lots of um, courage, you know, and, and hope because you, you would think, well, nobody knows you. Why, why would anybody say yes to being on, on your show? But he gave a very simple kind of short phrase, you know, which I've adapted and, and expanded a little bit in my, in my invitations. And I, I, I'm happy that you, that you found it uh, inviting, you know, that, that energy so yeah and, um, yeah I know I I just feel like so many people who would be in good people to invite into our shows are really really busy so yeah. I'm always like hey okay I would love for you to come to my show it'd be cool to talk to you about this here's some like times that I do things or here's some ways we can do it and let me know <laughs> mm. yeah. right because you gotta be quick <laughs> and I also have a um, Capricorn rising so maybe that that part of me is a little bit more like structured and okay, let's tuk, 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 the 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 list of, of yeah, <laughs> um, I, I have all, all, all that energy mixed up. Um, and um, so yeah, um, tell me a little bit uh, about you and, and and if you have any questions about me and we can uh, get to know each other a little bit more and, and see what what uh, what fantastic synchronicities come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I um well, right now I'm a, a really deep into my my spiritual sort of practice. You know, I've been uh invited by my guides and allies to offer that more and more to people um over time. I really have always been doing these things, but not necessarily 
I guess, professionally, you would say, or as an offer to people and inviting people to do uh, spiritual work with me. So I'm, I teach spiritual uh, classes, meditation, tarot, um, how to get deeper in touch with your own inner channels and, and therefore, you know, do what people call mediumship and channeling, you know, or move towards that. At least I help people acquire those, those skills. If they are choosing to head that direction, um, I also am an author. I write, uh, I actually channel my writing. So I have channeled books, both fiction and nonfiction. I have an yeah. inspirational. Actually, yeah. sorry to cut you off. Congratulations. I, I recently, I'm receiving your emails, your newsletter, I guess it is. And okay. congratulations, you just did uh, uh, one part of a trilogy that you're making a fiction thing. And, and you even, did you record the audiobook yourself? I didn't record it. Actually, a friend of mine did the recording. Wow. Um, I, I actually had recorded it previously, but then I also edited it a lot while I was recording it. Because when you read something out loud to yourself, I had edited this book like five times. Sign Curve of Aeons is what it's called. Phytalus is the name. And I had edited it so many times that once I was reading it out loud for my audiobook, <laughs> it just, I kept editing more and more. So by the time I was done with the audiobook, I had, would have had to re-record the whole entire book. Uh, and I just sort of lost steam with it. And then I was also writing the sequel and now I'm writing the third in the trilogy. And so I just, I have so many projects going and so many things I do that I lost track, but a good friend of mine, Chance Garten, who does Interverse podcast, he has this complete professional sound studio. He does the Solfeggio tune, uh, tuning forks and he does sound healings with people, that, which I also do, uh, but he has them pre-recorded uh, really clear long tones of these solfeggio tuning forks and so he added that into the book and he just did such a great job so it was really nice that he was able to do that and I think he'll be doing the uh, follow-up books as well in the trilogy so but yeah that so he, audiobook is out he, now. he read the the books awesome and you know what chance I, I just had a conversation with him like two days ago or three days ago. Really? Yeah, for the show. That's He's coming. So funny. It's going to be probably uh, an episode before yours or maybe two. Yeah, something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, yeah Chance also, is a good, a good friend. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And, and yeah, with, with him, we, we talked a little bit about chakras. We talked about, about sound healing, which is something that he and I share in common. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and you're talking about the, the spiritual skills. Uh, it's it's so amazing, you know, to to meet more and more people like this. Um, yeah, spiritual skills and uh, you're you're channeling channeling uh, books and and ideas and content. It's it's so much fun and uh, so I, I don't know. I, I have so many so many different avenues um, that we could explore. Maybe I cut you off when in, on on the story that you were telling about yourself. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, yeah. so I, I also offer that to people where we work one on one, uh, I do channel their guides and allies messages uh -huh. through for them, which really is tarot, that's tarot, you're doing the same thing, right, but I mm. also now do it without the cards. And so, you know, some more direct questioning and, and, and answering can come through in that way, uh, sometimes, and it's just nice. It's also very healing. I don't know if anyone's ever done a session with someone, um, you know, myself, I think you and I were talking for a moment before we started recording about Catherine O'Shea, a good friend of mine, but when you're able to connect with someone who actually can connect with those energies that are your guides and allies and your higher self and your soul, your connection to source, you are healing the whole time. And I just find it so amazing. Every time I do a session with someone, you know, they're releasing old energy, old mindset, stuck energy, they're receiving new nourishment from source. So it's like, it's almost like a healing and a channeling session in one. And I just love those so much. So I offer those as well um, as making Orgone and selling that and doing my shows, Rogue Ways and Riddle Path. So yeah, those are, <laughs> those are the things I was just sharing about me and what I do. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I'm a, I'm a very good interrupter. So I'm very sorry about, about that. I am too. <laughs> I'll, I'll, try not to, <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to do it so much. Uh, and yeah, exactly. I, I really love that. That thing you're saying about uh, channeling people's people's guides, you know, the whole subject is so so large and so sometimes confusing or or like so so difficult to 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 hold, you know. And but but definitely, I I've, I'm working with uh, Akashic Records readings, and and definitely I've had conversations with people where I I actually 
once was was talking to a woman who had had something in in connection with with a, a previous partner or something like that i don't remember the specifics but i do remember that um it was one of my first readings and, and so i wasn't very sure so i i was uh, i i i got uh, gained some courage and i told her okay so let me, let me just try this i'm getting this name does it ring a bell and she says that's the name of the guy mm, wow and, and when you get those kinds of confirmations it's fantastic because you you can get uh information that that is like neither you nor the other person knew it you know maybe past life stuff or or, or things of that of that nature but when you get like the name of a person that for me was a, a, a very big a very big moment of of confirmation of how how real all all this all this is even though you you know it you know intuitively you know it but when you get these i don't know if i could call them physical or or material world confirmations it's it's another level thing yeah it's very encouraging and uh reinforcing you know it's it's hard like you said you you sometimes doubt yourself and you don't really there's things too that come up that I'm like that sounds insane or that sounds really silly like I'm supposed to say this to this person right now and and say it seriously as though you know but every time I've trusted mm -hmm. myself and done that there has been a really great reason why it has been that thing or that phrase or that you know, whatever it is that's coming through and it's, and it's been very meaningful and, and again, healing for the person. It is healing for all of us to be in connection with that, no matter how it's coming through, whether we're the ones reaching up to channel it through for someone else, or whether you're the one receiving it, you know, on the, on the other end that both of us, we're all healing together because you cannot be in connection with that energy and not heal. It's just how it is. So, you know, sometimes uh, people will ask me like, well, why, you know, like, well, why did that come through? And why didn't this other thing come through, right? Like they'll, especially if someone's lost someone recently, like they really want that person to come through and, and share a message with them. And, um, and sometimes people who are past do come through, I'm much more likely to get a spirit guide or an ascended master, or, you know, those types of energies than a, than a human for, for me personally. But, um, but sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. And then people are saying, like, why, why that? And not this, and, you know, and it, there's always a reason though. And I almost always hear back from people within a month or two months or a couple of weeks or a couple of days. And they'll say, oh my God, <laughs> this and this and this happened. And it was connected to that thing. And that's why that came through. And there's always a reason, you know, and even when, especially I'll say when it, we don't get what we thought we wanted from the session, uh, there's also a reason for that. <laughs> so um, all of us have to be trusting in this more and more. You and I, with our skills, our abilities, our channel and what's coming through it, and then the people receiving it too, with that this is what you needed most from this session. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so true, you know, how 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 healing working with that is. And yeah, I remember, and, and this thing you're saying about um, uh, that, that you don't always get what you expected, uh, well, two things about that. One is uh, how, how incredible, one of the, the, those moments that light me up is when even for myself, my guides tell me or, or for another person, they, they give this interpretation of a situation as if you're always looking at it from, from this perspective and suddenly they look at the same thing from here and they say, hey, and what about this? And it's like, oh, that's evident. Thank you. And it's absolutely <laughs> healing. You know, they, they give you this, like, maybe maybe you're thinking, oh, um, um, I'm not good enough because of X. And then they look at the same X and they say, hey, but did you notice that X also means that you are good enough in this way? And you're like, wow, yeah. How, how they help clear those those limiting beliefs with just a small uh, small uh, nudge, you know, that's, that's yeah. just beautiful. And uh, oh, I had another well. thing that I, I don't know if I remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, like how, for example, also sometimes you ask a question and you expect a direct answer and they give you this, this like, I don't know how to call it, but uh, indirect answer, you know? And like, for example, once I asked them, uh, uh, inspired in, in McKenna, you know Terrence McKenna? Yeah. Okay, so inspired him when, when he said uh, that he asked the mushroom, uh, who are you for yourself or something like that I asked through um, when I went for for the first time I, I had a, an Akashic record reading uh, done to me 
I, I went with one of my questions was that to like know more about who they are and who they are for themselves. And the answer expecting like, oh, we are, I don't know, like the aliens from the something, yeah. something <laughs> or the spirits from the seventh, whatever. And, and I, I actually got the, the answer. When you know who you are for yourself, you will know who we are for ourselves. And I was like, oh, <laughs> give me an I answer. love that. <laughs> I love that. They're often like that, very like sort of cryptic and yeah. someone will ask a direct question. A lot of direct questions do get direct answers and then a lot of them get that type of answer and people are like frustrated. They're like, why? Why won't they just tell me? And I'm like, they did tell you. Yeah. <laughs> that is the answer, actually. Um, people like shortcuts, though, you know, like and, and I'm I also like shortcuts. I would like to have everything be super easy. And, but there's something in the not knowing. There's something in the struggle. There's something in the like process in between when you the ask timing, and when you yeah. get the right and that that's all so crucial actually and um it's part of that understanding that every moment actually uh is the moment that is exactly how it's supposed to be and exactly where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be and there is no rushing that there is no shortcut through that like you just are this and you're developing and changing as you go uh and things become more and more clear there's a group of uh you know, energies or entities that I've been interacting with for my entire life. Uh, but I never had a name for them. In fact, I didn't even ask them. <laughs> I just knew intuitively that they were um, very different from us in a way that they were just non physical in a way that they were maybe interdimensional, I understood more and more uh, that that they could present sort of physically, but that that wasn't their true form and that they had this ability to uh, communicate sort of what we would call psychically right? And, and share information in that way and receive information in that way. And so I just learned more and more as I went about what they were and how they were, but I never really asked them who they were. And eventually I, I wanted a name for them so that if I were ever talking to someone, I could call them this thing. And I was given by my own traditions, uh, which a lot of them are Native American or various indigenous cultures from around the world, their traditions inform me as well. And I've been trained by many people from those. And I got from some of those traditions, this term wogi, which is not very often used. Uh, and it's exactly them. I'm like, oh, that's what you are. They're interdimensional, they're spiritual in nature, they're psychic, they come at, you know, all these things are finally had someone who understood. And so I started using this term wogis. And then when I channeled my most recent book, The Key of Transformational Healing, which is this incredibly profound spiritual guidebook very short but just packed with dense information about who we are what we are and what we're doing here in that book they finally told me from their words what they are right and it wasn't as cryptic as the answer you received <laughs> it was but it's still cryptic so what they said is we are your spiritual ancestors and i understood it I understand it perfectly in my heart and in my deepest mind. But when people then start to ask me like, well, what does that actually mean? I'm like, there are spiritual ancestors. It's not physical. They're not in our DNA, right? But that this is like our souls come from this or have this lineage that goes back to that. And then people want to talk about star seeds and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't think it's such a specific lineage for us to need that we need to figure out which star and which sort of because then we get into like the whole alien thing and mm. I'm like that's all cool fine with that but I don't think they care <laughs> about that right I, they're just I like love, yeah, yeah sorry sorry finish finish your sentence no, go ahead <laughs> I, I love uh one of the things that I love is this when when, when all of this starts to connect you know spirits with the uh, and the aliens and the ghosts and the bigfoot and the and the ships and the uh, interdimensionals and the psychic and the uh, reality creation and and the, the mental nature of, of reality, etc. When it all starts to, mer to merge, you know, for me, several years ago, I remember it was like, OK, so aliens is this thing over here, uh, uh, ghosts, something over there, the etc. It was all like very different things. And never did it come to, did it occur to me that, hey, that's all mystery that's all uh the other like mckenna called it it's like there's this one thing that has many different and in, and in the end even even coming later to understand is that this other is actually you 
And, and that's part of why my question to them was, who are they? And the answer was basically, <laughs> we are you or, or something. When you know who you are, you're gonna know who we are. This idea of, of the, um, the feminine, you know, the feminine, the uh, uh, Shakti or whatever many names we have for it, the feminine aspect of, of ourselves, this half of the world that we have forgotten and, and kind of even rejected, and, and also not, not that being like, oh, how horrible we've done this, but actually it's like kind of part of the process, these ups and downs, remembering, forgetting. And uh, all, all of this um, crazy stuff <laughs> or, or um, uh, yeah, all of this other is other only in, 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 from the perspective of the exaggerated masculine energy that, that has, uh, grown i guess in our in our culture and in our time uh, especially you know with examples of like science being like only facts but then you go and look at at their own studies or at their own reasonings and logics and you say okay but you say everything came from the big bang okay how oh, that's so physics and so uh, uh, uh what's, the, what's the word like absolute and and concrete but then, but what was before the, what caused the Big Bang? And they don't have an answer. Oh, it was vibrating strings. And what caused the vibrating strings? They don't have really uh, the answers that they think they do, uh, but they are so locked into a, a, a paradigm and a way of looking at things that they just don't see the, it's like the, the fish in the water that doesn't recognize the water or, or the, the forest and the trees or whatever. I said so much. Um, but it's it's really that that part. Oh yeah, I know why I I went on this beautiful or whatever tangent. <laughs> is that you you said okay that this woge is I guess you would do you know how that's spelled like W O G I S? Okay, exactly. cool. I'm going to search that later. And um, you say that they are your spiritual ancestors. So uh, and you mentioned that sometimes people get come with a star seed subject which for me is a very interesting one, only because with time, speak, continuing to develop my connection with my, with my guides, one time I asked them, I don't remember the exact question, but the answer was that, I think it was like, where does my soul come from? Something along those lines. And the answer was, uh, they said from Taurus. And I was like, yeah. what, what, does, what do you mean? But then and I've always had this, this like, affinity, you know, with the Pleiades, you know, it's, it's something that's so hard to say and it's written weird and it, it's uh, this, this very feminine energy of the seven sisters and, and my number, my lucky number has always been seven. And so I've always had a connection, not like, oh, I am from the Pleiades, I've never had that, but it, it, always the Pleiades has been something very like, uh, not important, but a relevant, let's say a relevant um, symbol for me. And they said Taurus, and I was like, eh, well, that's not even mean. I went to look for it, and it turns out that the Pleiades are in Taurus. And I was like, wow, you, those, <laughs> those answers that you don't know, and they tell you something, and I never would have imagined Taurus and the Pleiades had anything to do with each other. Yeah. But that's how we do. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's those are those same sorts of confirmations, right? That you're you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Clearly, that's a real thing that I didn't know before, um, not consciously, at least, you know, and subconsciously, if I did, I wouldn't have been able to recall it anyway. So, uh, you know, and I think they do pull on those things that are in our subconscious to help us, because if they for let's just say somehow you didn't know the word Taurus, they might say like the bull with the horns in the sky or so. Right. And then you'd yeah. find it anyway, like they would go through whatever filters you have in order to find it. But I have this um, teacher too, who has helped me understand, you know, the physical and the spiritual, they're just two sides of the same coin really. Right. And, and when you're talking about the scientists and that they don't understand that yet too, some of them do, and then they go even further, but um, you know, when we're talking about source and I always think of it as this sort of nebulous, like spiritual, like heavenly, you know, energy that's primal, it's the unknowable unknown and all of these things. But I also more and more understand it's a it's a physical location, and I've actually been there with my guides and allies and seen it at the center of the universe. Uh, and this is literally source, right? So again, we have this physical and this spiritual, you know, merged together in mm -hmm. one. Uh, and when we're talking about 
you know, star seeds and all of these things, it's much more to me that this is sources emanation through almost like a prism, right? Of the of the physical, psycho spiritual dimensions all at once. And so, you know, when this little spark or this beam or whatever it is shoots out from source as our soul or our consciousness or whatever, and we go through this star and then to here and then to here and then to earth. And it's not such a like physical map necessarily, but that's like the energy structure that we are here shining source into this space, like through that aspect of the prism. Um, and I just understand this more and more, the more I work with people, the more I hear from their guides and allies, the more I see what they're sort of struggling with. And then I see often how it connects to their past lives and how it connects to their physical ancestry here on earth too. And then you start to understand the, the physical came back with the equal and opposite sort of expression through our DNA, through our physical lineages, through our ancestry, you know, and, and when we talk about our karma and what we're here doing and releasing that karma and transforming that karma, we're actually talking about doing that for our entire lineage, for our entire physical lineage, which is different from our spiritual lineage, but they are coming together in order to heal and transform all of this here. Uh, and we're all responsible for a slice of that. And I think that's really interesting. I don't know if it's, if anyone is following me or if you're following me, but that our spiritual energy comes through this certain prism and that our physical uh, sort of transmutation that we're working on karmatically is like perfectly served by that energy we're bringing to it. Right. And so we're able to, in this one life, you know, release sort of transform, grow our soul while also healing all of the past and history. So then we get into like retro causality and time as well. And it's just like, there's, there's so much going on here and we just sit and watch TV. You know, <laughs> it's like crazy how mundane we take this amazing spiritual slash physical slash psychological gift that we've been given and that we are, uh, and sometimes just do the silliest things with it, which I do too. Mm -hmm. I think we all do that. That's mm -hmm. totally fine, but it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. There's, it's, it's it's so simple and so complex you know there's there's these habitual patterns that we've been uh unintentionally we've been or, or unconsciously we've been practicing you know this this uh this sleepwalking we've been practicing it for 30 40 whatever many years for people and and then you 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 stumble in onto you stumble with or whatever the, the word is you stumble on on the onto you, you hit the, the, the spiritual path or it hits you or, or if you're lucky, it, it hugs you and gives you a kiss and, and, and you stumble upon that. And suddenly you, you're, you're starting to, to activate new habits, new, if you think it in, in, the, in the physical way, you're starting to activate new neural pathways in your brain of new activities or new ways of doing things. Also in a more subtle way, new ways of thinking, about yourself, uh, your self-concept, your self-value, uh, etc. And you're starting to, to activate those new things. And then you get frustrated because, oh, I, I tried this manifestation thing, I tried this uh, mantra thing, this meditation, whatever. And the only thing that comes up is anxiety and uh, it's generating me uh, depression and, and it's not working, I'm not manifesting. But then you, you realize, okay, yeah, but it's like, this tsunami of 30 or more years or whatever the, the case would be for when, when people start their journey, the, this tsunami that is pushing in one direction and you're trying to, to go with the flow, but, <laughs> but there's this counter flow of, of the mainstream or whatever we could call it, that has that's, that many years of you repeating the same and, and uh, stumbling with the same rock for years and years and practicing the same thing without even realizing it because it's like just this is who I am right but suddenly you start seeing oh I can be different okay I'm gonna try to be different once that's not gonna be necessarily enough unless you are extremely lucky again uh, but in general you're going to have to try it several times and actually going through that frustration is, is something that maybe you've been escaping from, you know, oh, I don't want to, to confront frustration, so I'm going to always be a, 
uh, a people pleaser or whatever, but suddenly, oh, there's frustration in you, there's anxiety in you that you're trying to, to look away from because I sometimes say that the hardest thing that we're here to do is like exactly what we are here to do is to feel our feelings, to be in in the body, to be in the in the in the in the even in the personality, to to feel whatever is coming up. And when something challenging comes up, we've been practicing for many, many years uh, running away or, or, yeah. or some other variation of that. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a powerful thing. And, and you, I like how you bring this thing of physical and spiritual lineage coming together. It, it reminds me of, of the Buddhist thing of the, you know, the, the, the book of death, the, the book of the dead, the rebirth thing, and how you're in the, the, the bardo, the, the space between death and, and, and rebirth. And, and how the, the mental energies that you have, like that you bring with you or your soul or your, your Atman brings with it, how those things um, condition or, or kind of guide where you're going to, to be reborn until this was very, very crazy and very, very Freudian of the Buddhist that eventually you're like hovering over your parents about to have sex and, and you've come there because their energies and their vibrations match perfectly not only your 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 mental things or your maybe your spiritual thing but also the genetic thing that they're going to create is going to be the perfect body that can house those spiritual energies that can uh, have the opportunity to to heal the, the the two aspects or the two sides of the coin which is a very very nice way of putting it i love it yeah that is really cool i had totally forgotten that that was even how it was supposedly happening in the Buddhist sort of uh, perspective. And it is exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. It really is. And then you think, you know, and people kind of hate thinking this, like you said, we've been running away from all sorts of things for most of our lives. So we don't like to confront things like this, but that that means that your body is exactly perfect for you and what you're doing here, including your deformations or your things that don't work quite right or the things that you struggle with physically or whatever, which I have plenty of myself. And I have had to do the same thing where I'm like, for how many years I just lamented. It was like, how unfair. And this is, rah, rah, rah. and then one day I realized, you know, again, this was actually through past life memory recall, but there's a reason for this. Actually, there's an exact specific equal and opposite karmatic energy that I held in my space that created this physical or rather the physical allowed that karma to be present in this life. So I could release it and transform it. Uh, even, and especially my deepest hardships that have been so difficult <laughs> so hard made life so much harder right but then i also i gained so much from that too and it's not just this like pretty hallmark sort of way of looking at hardship like well you always gain some character or whatever no it's actually true that by going through that hardship i developed this intense depth of all sorts of things compassion my own ability to be in my body despite great physical pain and remain is standing with that and just watch it objectively not disassociated from it but really connected with it and still just allow it to move through i mean that is what a healer should do right <laughs> and so i am now a healer i couldn't have become that if i didn't learn that ability really deeply in my own sort of bones and flesh right um so we, we have these sort of ideas of like how unfair life can be. And, you know, the same with our mental faculties, our emotional, specific emotional complexes and things. And, and then we blame, we say, well, I wouldn't be like this if my parents weren't so messed up. Well, you selected your parents and their messed up ways. So you actually chose to be, because you already had that actually, they didn't give it to you. You vibrated with it so much that you were attracted to it because it is you, um, which is a hard pill for so many people to swallow but uh, looking you know? at it from the other side or like the the guys would do but also at the same time that vibration that you share with them is what actually was sort of pre-written or, or pre pre-cognized that would help you develop these skills for example in your case the the, the healing abilities etc it, it's like it's both things at the same time it's it's very poetic life is very poetic yeah. it's very beautiful and perfect even and especially when it seems so dark and so difficult. <laughs> that that too is our gold, right? That we're transmuting it into gold. Yeah. 
Yeah, one one of of those of those uh, different perspectives again is how uh, we look at the the difficult things and like, oh my god, well, okay, I'm gonna have to go through it and that. But at the same time, it's like, how would you grow if you didn't have something like to? I don't know how to put it. The guys would be very good at, at finding the words, but how would you grow without having something to to grow against or without without a challenge? I mean, that would be like a way, right? How how would you be like the best football player or whatever if you didn't have a, an opposing team that made it hard for you and you overcame that difficulty and, and scored the, the goal or the touchdown or whatever? And, and in that moment, you become the, the greatest but you're not the greatest only because you put the ball in the in the in the score, but because of how hard it was for you to reach there also, and and it's <clears throat> we get so lost in this idea of reaching the destination that we forget how not just important but how uh, primal it is or primordial or whatever that the, the the whole journey is the this this cliche of the journey is the is the is the goal or the journey is is the whole point it's like and it's not just that the journey is the point it's, it's kind of hard to for me at least to understand that alone but it's like how you walk that journey is is the point how present you are in it and how you react and or how you respond to the things that come up during that is what when you reach that supposed goal how you traverse the journey that's what makes you uh, uh, great or whatever because you can go through the same difficulties but cheat the whole way and, and make the goal uh, but then you're going to when you put that that ball in the in the score you're going to be the guy who did all this uh, in, incorrect shit along the way whereas some, and, and there's going to be something within you unless you're kind of a psychopath <laughs> there's going to be something within you that that's like nag, nagging you or or or, or constantly feeling uncomfortable and you'll be on that not only if you cheat if you if you don't give uh, an, an honest you know uh, yeah. effort for the thing something within you will be uncomfortable and you'll be oh so I reached the goal and I'm still feeling uncomfortable why why is this I, I did all the things but yeah but honest were you were you cheating on the on the solitaire you know I don't know if English if in English yeah. you have that <laughs> phrase but in Spanish yeah. with you don't do uh, cheating on solitaire. I mean, you're playing against yourself. I guess nobody right. else, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's so true. I love that. Don't cheat on solitaire. I actually had this as like a moral quandary when I was young and playing solitaire and I would cheat sometimes. And then at some point I was like, well, what is the point then? Like, <laughs> let's just not cheat. There's no point in the cheating because it's just you. You're the only one here. Like, what are you actually even accomplishing? So it's so funny that that's a phrase, but yeah, these hardships and these things, you know, in the actual moment itself, like you're saying along the journey, there's these hardships and they're they're uh, helping you actually. And this is the same concept that we see archetypally with Lucifer. It's the same concept we see archetypally with the trickster, right? That there's this, this thing that's going to come up and it's going to like poke you and it's going to trip you and it's going to throw something in your path and it's going to laugh at you, right? And, <laughs> and we are so, especially I feel like in the West, we are so like petulant about that. We're like, meh, why me? And like, why is it me? I do, I do this all the time. This is one of the things I'm working on, right? Where I'm like, why is this so, oh, it's so annoying? And especially when I'm like, you know, I'm meditating and I'm doing all this healthy stuff, whatever. And then things still get like so suddenly just messed up and life is like crazy. And I'm like, why? Oh, I again, like, why me? Well, because, <laughs> and here's a really silly example, but lately I've been having this thing that is happening to me and I know it's my guides and allies doing it and I know it's this trickster sort of energy it's actually serving me and I get it but I will have like little hairs will just like come in and like tickle my eyes and my nose like all day long and I'm like oh my god like get out of my face like what is this and like a bug will just come and hit me in the eye and then like some stick will fall out of a tree and like hit me on the shoulder and I like feel so targeted and attacked and I'm like why is that and I'm I'm like about to explode. And then finally one day I'm like, this is exactly why it's happening. <laughs> Cause it's like, look, if it's so easy to perturb you and make you angry and just suddenly give up on everything in life, then how are you ever going to face anything else? Not that I haven't also faced much more difficult things, but 
you know, I, I'm much better at facing the like big open bad guy than I am at these little constant things. And so it's this really good practice actually of each time just going, yeah, I mean, that's just a thing that happened. It doesn't even matter, right? You just brush it out of your eye or you just brush your shoulder off and you just keep going. And, and when you can keep that calm, truly, like you're saying, you can't be dishonest about it. You can't cheat by lying and saying, I am calm, even though this thing is annoying the crap out of me. Like you actually have to be calm. You actually have to be maybe even more than that. You can get to a point where you genuinely feel an actual appreciation for this because it's helping you to release anger at small annoyances <laughs> that don't matter, right? Something like that uh, is this trickster and this Luciferian sort of energy in the world that we actually need. We need it so that we continue because like you said, I would not ever become the person who can remain calm and actually, you know, present and grateful in the face of things like that unless this training had occurred for me, <laughs> right? So um, it is really interesting. I, I don't want bad things to happen to me and annoying things and hard things but at the same time i i see the value for sure yeah 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 um it, it, i love i love having these conversations that just flow you know mm -hmm. and at the same time i need to balance it with with uh trying to to bring it to the <laughs> to the topic that we wanted to talk point. about <laughs> but i think again you know in this in this very trickster way or in this very uh, I, I sometimes I associate the trickster so much with the spiritual side, you know, with the, with the feminine. Uh, not not that women are tricksters, but that the feminine energy has has that very that aspect very very present in it. And and so we were talking about stuff that maybe has nothing to do. But now when I'm trying to 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 bring it all back to, to radionics, orgon energy, reality creation, it's like okay, we've given like the the background. Yeah. Uh, because if you go directly to radionics, okay, with what intention are you going into the thing? With what intention? And we've talked about that now, you know, it's like, okay, hard things in, in life happen. Uh, how do you confront them? How do you uh, respond to it? And so when you, when you have, uh, so when you've practiced enough, you know, this, this being centered, this uh, learning to see the signals, the signs from the universe, you know, this, definitely when 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 bad things are like so up in your face that it's like oh here is a bad thing for me it's the same way I, i'm very like okay let's let's go let's let's hit this let's fix it let's uh let's integrate it let's work with it let's but when it's very subtle it's like well the you know that chinese torture that they drop a a, a drop yes. of water on your forehead for for hours and hours and they say that eventually you go mad it's <laughs> it's that same thing you know like that yeah uh, and and so learning that it's it's a very subtle a very subtle uh, realm or whatever uh, or, or kind of a human experience it's is a very important aspect of then okay what can i do to bring my my will or my intention into into my life and, and have a, the experience of what i want uh, because uh, that is one of the things that i i've always wanted to to talk with this woman called sue mortar she's kind of for me she's like the the female uh, joe Dispenza, and i wanted to talk to her and one of the questions i'd like to ask her and, and even joe Dispenza, if i get the when i when i get the, the opportunity when, yeah. with them <laughs> I'm going to ask them what is the kind of dark side or the the crooked side or, or of of reality manifestation, reality creation. What's the potential pitfalls, you know, for people that come into? Because eventually, I think this is going. This topic is going to become more mainstream as it's already kind of starting to the secret and and uh, uh, you know sometimes. Uh, my girlfriend and I will watch. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm kind of ashamed to admit it. We watch the. Um, I don't. I don't really know which one it is, but the Real Housewives of something or the other, or the oh, yeah. or the All Stars, whatever. You know, sometimes it's cool to to just watch stuff just to have fun and and just right. to <laughs> to like and also as kind of like an anthropological study, you know, of like oh wow these people exist and what is their mindset. It also is is very interesting and. And sometimes they are very funny, <laughs> and um, and they are talking about these kind of things, you know. 
people like that, people who maybe we would consider shallow or whatever, or or of um or, or very privileged or stuff like that, they are not uh, perhaps who knows, right? I don't know, but maybe they are not as practiced in the spiritual journeys, or maybe they are even higher spiritual beings than ourselves. But even though they are more of like a mainstream kind of people, let's say that's one, that's kind of my point. These ideas are popping up in 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 the mainstream, and they are replicating these uh, memes as well. So again, so what I was trying to say is all this stuff is coming is becoming more more mainstream, more known, and so people who haven't had this this background that we kind of were alleging to alleging alluding to and, and talking about just now during this first half of the show um, might fall on the potential pitfalls that I'll. I'll tell you later I'll, I'll let you know i mean one day when uh, when sue and joe tell me their opinions I'll, I'll let you know and so we've talked about that and now let's okay let's move on and and just kind of lay the the foundations of what radionics is and orgone energy and maybe if you want something about reality creation what how those three things are connected and uh, and we'll we'll go deeper into this in the second hour that uh, for starters, it's going to be on Patreon, so I invite people to, to go check it out there. But maybe if it's very important and very cool, I'll, I'll just put it uh, for free on, on the YouTube. So let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm always torn for the same thing. I'm like, but everything's yeah. so important. I want everyone to have it. And at the same time, we, we do deserve to be supported in what we're doing too. So it's a yeah, but, you know <laughs> what? interesting line to draw. Yeah, looking at it from the, again, from the, the, the kind of the guide's perspective, I had this thing happen to me. So I have the, the Patreon. I don't have many Patreons right now. I, I must admit it. <laughs> uh, but I'm very, very thankful for the very few that I have because it's like, wow. But then I go to see the, the YouTubes that I've shared over there and they pr practically have no views. I think most of them have zero views. You know, the second half of episodes that maybe have hundreds of views on, on, the, on the YouTube. And so I was like, oh my God, man, they don't have views, this sucks. I wanted these videos to be, to, you know, to attract people to the Patreon and to give me lots of views and, 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 and lots of Patreons. And, and, and then one moment I got this, this, this shot of intuition or whatever it's called. And I was like, then the people who are on Patreon, they didn't even go because of the videos. They went for me. They yes. were uh, inspired or, or, or they liked or not liked, but they, 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 they felt like supporting me just for myself, not for something that I offered them, like, oh, I'm going to give you, you know, there's always this mindset of, oh, you have to give value to the audience. And, and they were like, they are on the Patreon and they basically don't watch the videos because they don't really care about that. They mostly care about the, perhaps the energy that I, that I share on, this, on these free videos. And that was very refreshing, you know, the same situation that felt like a failure, was actually a, a triumph that I wasn't seeing. And, and that was so powerful for me. <laughs> it's so beautiful too. That's I feel like that's so many people actually in Patreon and I'm always trying to, I have artist friends and artists are worse than us even often that, not that you and I aren't artists too, but you know, that's their main thing. Uh, and they're often the worst at valuing themselves mm. and they're, you know, they're like, please come be on my Patreon. I'll give you this and this and this. And I'm like, well, the, the idea is actually that people support you, not that you give them like more value than they're giving you and work yourself to death. They want you to keep creating what you already just create. <laughs> uh, and then, and they want to just support you. And it's so hard for me too, but also, especially artists, I think to accept that, um, we deserve to be supported. We do provide value just by being mm -hmm. ourselves and having conversations like this and putting this out there and inviting people to see themselves and their place in this giant, beautiful universe more clearly, um, which they can also do with orgone and radionics uh, as one, one methodology of doing so. <laughs> oh, so tell us, tell us more about all that. Yeah, so, um, well, I'm actually wearing this radionics device right now. Uh, and this is called the Chi O. It has a radionics transceiver, or I should say transmitter 
within it. Uh, and it has a computer chip, but it has been programmed to my specific frequencies. So the basic idea of radionics is that there, everything has a frequency and that we can know the frequency uh, and that we can therefore transmit frequencies, which we, we like. We can transmit frequencies, which sort of balance out frequencies that seem out of balance to us. So things that we don't like, we can bring back into balance. Everything actually has a purpose and a role, right? So the idea isn't that you annihilate something and that it no longer exists, but that you bring it back into balance if it's out of balance. Um, you know, one obvious example is the yeast in our bodies. Women get yeast infections, men get yeast infections and don't know it. We all have possibly like an imbalance in yeast, but you wouldn't want to get rid of the yeast, right? You just want it to come back into a state of being how it sort of should be in balance with the system. So yeast also has a frequency, right? And you can know it and you can measure it and you can find out what it is. And then you can send it the frequency of balance so that it is more likely to be in balance within you. Uh, every chakra you have has a frequency. Your eyeballs have a add, frequency. Add one thing <laughs> about the, the yeast that you said. So again, to, to like uh, characterize again, this thing of the imbalance of the masculine energy in our society. Oh, uh, you got a, an infection, antibiotics, let's kill every, every living thing in your body. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, we are so smart because we found how to heal people. <laughs> No. Which is, it's interesting too, right? We've actually always been using radionics in this way. We just didn't know that it had such a, both scientific and spiritual in one uh, approach, right? When we say like, okay, you have whatever going on, some infection, right? Well, here's some oregano. Well, the oregano, you know, we can say like, oh, it has this physical property and the compound in the oregano does this to the infection and it kills it or whatever. Or we could say the vibration of the oregano is bringing the corresponding equal opposite vibration to this thing so that it can be in balance, mm, right? Kind of an That's alchemy. all that we... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is like an alchemy. So uh, radionics is that idea that you can know any any vibration of anything and that you can then also work with that to bring it whatever it is you want to manipulate it however you want. So in the, in the older forms of radionics, we had these big, huge machines and we would like put a picture in it or we'd do these things and it worked. It worked really well actually, but now we're so much more refined. And we have these IDF machines, intrinsic data filled machines. Um, one of my favorite people in the world is Phoenix Aurelius and Phoenix Aurelius works with IDF machines. And he's actually the one who, um, helped me make my Chio that I'm wearing here uh, even better. By the way, if anybody out there is listening to this and the more you hear about it, the more you want your own Chio, uh, I do have a link uh, that you can help support me and my work by going through this link. It doesn't cost you anymore, but I just get a little kickback uh, and it's on my link tree. So if you go to link tree uh, slash Lindsay Sharman, uh, you can um, which I should have had my name, Lindsay Sharman, instead of Lindsay Brown. But anyways, <laughs> so people could see how to spell it, but I'm sure you'll have it wherever they're listening or watching. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, if you go I, to, I love the links in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to that link tree somewhere down there, it says chi o organize your chi, because uh, your chi is another way of describing that energy field that is also vibrations, um, which is what the radionics deals with. So anyways, he's the one, Phoenix Aurelius, got me to um, get this chi o, uh, and he actually has his IDF machine and what happened, I'll just share this story. I, I have this very severe, I have PTSD, I have CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, it's like a step up, it's super PTSD. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, so I have this phobia, oftentimes uh, phobias are part of how you may know that you have PTSD or trauma of some kind. And, and on most of the time, people with PTSD have some kind of phobia and a phobia is a irrational so it's not in any way rational it's not like oh i'm scared of getting shot when someone's holding a gun around me it's like no that's very rational it's a rational fear <laughs> um but you know an irrational fear that you have an uncontrolled response to you cannot choose otherwise except to have this response to it so mine is moths and when a moth comes near me i scream i throw things i tip over tables i like cower on the floor like a crazy person and I have a very hard time. I get better and better as time goes on, but my whole life I've had an impossible time trying not to do those things. So a couple of years ago, we had thousands of moths all day, every day come through our region. It was a huge imbalance of moths. 
And every time they were all over inside the house, if I went outside, it was even worse because they were just everywhere. I mean, you could not walk without getting hit by moths. And so for weeks, many, many weeks, I was constantly being confronted by the worst thing that exists in this reality for me specifically. So I was losing my mind. I was crying all the time. I was cowering on the floor in the corner. Like I couldn't function. And Phoenix Aurelius, one of my good friends, saw a post on Facebook where I just said, I live in hell. (laughs) Uh, And he understood that I wasn't being funny and that I actually felt like I was living in hell. And he reached out and he said, can I send you an IDF transmission, the intrinsic data field, the radionics transmission uh, for phobias? And I said, yeah, anything. I don't even care. I'll do anything. (laughs) Like just do something, help me. And he said, okay, when I get to get around to it, I'll do it. I, I, you know, he's very busy person. He does all this alchemical spajir. Like he's an amazing person. Uh, and, and so I said, okay, fine. You know, whatever. At some point in that day, I, I said to my boyfriend, Johnny, I said, oh my God, I suddenly just, I just have a piece. I'm still understand that the phobia is there. I still understand. I don't want a moth near me. But I finally, for the first time in weeks, just feel like some kind of release and lift from this. And it's just so much better. And I'm like, maybe I'm finally getting through it and getting over it. Maybe the constant exposure is like worn me down and I've just released it or something. I don't know, but I'm so happy right now. (laughs) And a couple hours later, I got an email from Phoenix and he said, I started the transmission at, you know, 443 or whatever it was. And I I was like, that's exactly when I, and I didn't know when he was going to send that. Right. So this was my first introduction to how powerful radionics can be. Uh, And he got me then eventually to get this geo so I could always walk around with this transmission and 249 other transmissions because he got my specific uh, radionics, you know, energetic reading and he programmed this to me. He got all of my chakras, all of the heavy metals I'm trying to purge, all of the things that are in balance in my body, my mind, my spirit, they're all in here. And I get to walk around just with that constant information coming into my field. So it's easier and easier for me to transform these things myself. It's not like this instant fix, right? Like I said, I was still afraid of the moths, but I just had this much easier time staying present in it, staying conscious in it, and then choosing, you know, my reaction instead of just reacting. Um, So that's one really good example of radionics. And I love, I love this thing. I wear it all the time. (laughs) It's, It's not just beautiful jewelry. It's also this powerful field enhancer and balancer. Um, I will say it's hard to find somebody who can do that for you, who can program 250 different frequencies into a chip for you. When you buy this GO, it comes with two, two frequencies for you. Uh, and, but they're very, very cool uh, frequencies still. And you get to choose which one you want. And it can be like reduction of fear and anxiety or chakra balancing or all sorts of things. So uh, it's still really awesome. And if you do find someone who can program this, Um, unfortunately, Phoenix Aurelius is so busy with so many clients and people that he's healing really deep, complex issues from that he doesn't offer that as a service, but there's people out there who do, and you can find them. That's really fantastic. Uh, exactly because of this, um, kind of merging of science and spirituality is why I, uh, why I, I started getting interested in in radionics and wanted to learn more. And I had something that came to me when you were speaking, um, that then I forgot it. And now when I started speaking, it came back. I was like, ah, okay, I forgot it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch the video again and listen to her speak again. And it's gonna come back and I'll tell her, but it, it just came back. Ah. You were talking about the, the moth thing. Well, one thing was Im- immediately I thought of the Mothman prophecies. Imagine if you saw like a, a human moth, a giant, giant moth. moth. I think it's actually kind of more like a bird, kind of like Garuda, but okay, whatever. And the, <clears throat> the thing that came to me was that you were talking about this, the, the PTSD and the irrational fear. And immediately, again, from this like uh, guide's perspective, the, the, when you said irrational fear, I thought, ah, irrational. We always say irrational as, as something negative, but irrational means the opposite of rational, which is the, the the feminine aspect which is the spiritual so oh it's a spiritual fear well oh, interesting <laughs> yeah right? that's a really good point you know i i've been working more and more with the spiritual aspect of communicating with moth the, the the great moth spirit if you want to call it that right the collective sort of moth mm-hmm. consciousness um 
And that's been really, really good for me when I go into my spiritual space and I invite that moth in, it is huge Mm -hmm. and and it's funny because that doesn't necessarily equate to fear it's not like how much i fear it is how big it is when i do my spiritual work and guidance sessions with people or healing ceremonies with people it's kind of the um i hate to uh rank things by hierarchical you know sort of let's do it let's do it you have the the best ptsd so you're allowed to Right. <laughs> um, but when I work with various different spiritual energies, they're, uh, the size of them is yeah. sort of their their energy level, right? So these mm. high level energies that are like gods or goddesses, they're huge. And they're sometimes so huge that I can only see like a foot for a second. And I have to like back up and look up and not, oh, there's your whole body. Mm. Like it's giant, like a tiny, tiny, right? And then you know, when a lot of animal guides or like our ancestors come, they're the same size as us, mm-hmm. right? From, from my perspective in there. And so there's all these different sizes and it's, it's indicative of their sort of rank or yeah, their spiritual makes, energy and achievement. Makes sense. Yeah. And the moth is huge. So I'm like, I guess this is actually mm-hmm. like this high level spiritual energy that I'm in deep mm-hmm. rejection of. <laughs> so what is mm-hmm. that? Right. Yeah. Uh, so this is really helping me uh, conversations right. with the moth on that plane are really helping mm-hmm also to release this more and more i know i'm going to get there someday yeah yeah of course you are you are really supposedly are. supposedly yeah. it's impossible right that's what they say like it's impossible to, to completely heal from ptsd it's mm-hmm. impossible to completely release an actual phobia mm-hmm. i don't think that's true no, i didn't either <laughs> so many things were deemed impossible and uh, just saying in, even in the physical you know the the four minute mile and stuff like that uh, right I was thinking like, yeah, this, this, uh, like, especially, you know, with insects and bacteria and, and viruses or whatever, uh, there's this whole thing about if, if viruses are a thing or whatever, but these, let, let's just talk about insects. I can totally see how they're, they're like a, a spiritual, um, what you call it, the, the great spirit of, of the, of the, of like the, the the, 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 the the group mind or the group spirit of the, of the thing I can totally see how it would be so huge because on the one hand it's got uh, so many years of existence you know moths or spiders have or flies have existed for so long that time is one factor I guess in in the in the in the size perhaps of the energy of a, of a, of a thing right and and so in time they have it in, on the favor then in numbers and in not just in numbers like how many uh, moths or flies do are, are existing in this instant across the world it must be a lot a lot more than humans yeah. and they have such short lifespans that they reproduce and so there's this there's time there's numbers and there's like um repetition or evolution or, or regeneration you know that's that they have so much of that and and their learning which is very different from the learning of a human or of a generation of humans or a collective of humans but in their specific niche they they are like i definitely think of them as something immense and, and giant so it totally makes sense to think of of their collective uh, spiritual energy as being so big yeah but not as big as a as a, as a god i guess right mm. well and you know what's so interesting about the energy and the message of the moth that I've been learning most of my life because of this phobia Mm -hmm. um, is that, you know, one of my earliest shamanic teachers was saying, well, the moth is your, one of your best allies actually, and it's here to guide you. And, you know, the moth is always doing what? It's always moving towards the light. It's always moving out of darkness and towards the light. It has this very specific goal and it never wavers from that goal. And it's, and it is related to seeking out the light and moths do, right? They're actually guided by, um, uh, the moonlight, uh, most importantly at night is when they do their best traveling. Uh, and then also some moths at least, <laughs> and then also at the sunlight, right. And that there are certain directions that they're headed. Uh, some have even posited, perhaps they're being drawn by starlight, certain stars, right. That that's this whole crazy thing about like how different animals move, but anyways, they're guided by this light. They're trying to find the light and they're, this is why when you have a light on all the moths are like, bashing into it over and over again because they're so deeply programmed to move towards the light 
well, I did this further investigation at some point. I have this um, kind of essay about it on my site, rogueways.org. If anybody wants to go to the musing section, I have a bunch of types of writing there. But I was investigating this idea that we used to wake up in the middle of the night. You know, we used to have this by, I think they call it biphasic sleeping or something. And we'd sleep for about four hours, get one REM cycle, wake up, have like a, an hour or two of just peace and quiet, maybe reflection, journaling. And this was a human worldwide you know all cultures ever everybody had this uh, and then we do another four hour get another REM cycle in and and whatnot well uh, we stopped doing that at a certain point because of artificial light and so artificial light has has stolen from us this really beautiful time where people would get more deeply in connection with themselves their soul their mind right because you didn't have all this chaos of the day around you you're just deeply in that sort of space and uh you maybe even go out for a night walk and have some communion with the moon and different energies are in that time right and uh we all need that and we don't have it anymore because of this artificial light and then i was you know thinking about the moth also has been completely screwed by artificial light like you watch moths they're they used to just have like one path right they'd be born somewhere and they'd fly in a certain direction that's where they would need to end up and mate and do their thing or whatever and like all this, this whole cycle it's interrupted by artificial light so this deeper message too has been sinking in over time that we're making the light but we have to get better and better and better at discerning which light <laughs> and why right because there's a billion false lights in this world there's a billion distractions there's a billion things that feel kind of good and like oh look there's a light bash into it over and over again but that's not actually the light you were meant to find there's something else and it might be the most faint given all of this distraction and artificiality and that lesson has been really important as well mm -hmm. how many false paths are there how many false lights are there mm -hmm. that we're drawn to and to developing our discernment is a very difficult thing in this day and age of constant noise so many things so many publications so many shows so many people all of this stuff like which thing do i go towards we have to use like something maybe um more internal than external at that point to develop your discernment about which which one which one are you going to choose <laughs> yes that's so true you you remind me of of this like i can't stand those they're very hard on my eyes the, uh, the, the like i think it's the cold lights you know the, the more blue tones of lights you know and and i always try to have more more orange kinds of lights because they they feel better for me and um, and you know, I, I I see that there's people in their homes, in their bathrooms, in their bedrooms, in the living room, kitchen, everywhere they have these invasive lights that that are just so they, they generate a different kind of energy, definitely. They're, you know, they, they're bad for your cells, even mm -hmm. your body doesn't like them. Yeah. Right. So I I see how how prevalent that that uh, frequency or tone of light is. And, and I, I always, I'm, I'm always like, oh my God, those lights, <laughs> they, they drive me crazy just to see like my neighbors, you know, I can maybe look out the window when I see the, the white uh, glare coming out of the window uh, in their homes. And I'm like, oh, poor guys, <laughs> they don't even know what they're doing. Right. To yeah. But that generates uh, a more, a more um, uh, productive, um, a more, no, a more, uh, a more active consumer, so that's good for 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 capitalism. So <laughs> it has some some effect. But no, I, I mean, we can we can always be. I mean, there will always be people in need of not in need, but who who can make a, a, a an expansion in their lives. You know, it's not like oh yeah, the guys who who don't see the spiritual thing are are less than. No, it's actually, I was there, uh, you were there, everybody was there, and we were through through hardship in, in many of our cases, but some others maybe through 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 a more uh, a more peaceful or, or harmonious way of, of, of grace, we're able to to start our spiritual journey earlier, and we are now uh, given the opportunity and um, even more the the, not the obligation, but the, um, what's the word? Mm -hmm. to, to help others, you know? Uh, yeah. 
the, 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 the moral impulse or the, mm. the, the heart, you know, to like the compassion to, to share what has helped us with, uh, with others who ask for it and who are interested. Because if somebody came and, and talk, talked to me about the law of attraction or, or, or gods and, and spirituality when I wasn't open to it, and it would have fallen on, on deaf ears and uh, but but then again uh, hearing those things for the first time is is also uh, important even if you reject them because if eventually you you are you are graced with 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 being more curious about those things uh, that first time you will always remember oh wow yeah when I heard this for the first time I thought it was crazy and now it doesn't feel so crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I am not going crazy, definitely. So there must be something to it. So it's also nice. Um, and so just to round up this first half, it's been amazing. Uh, I really loved uh, getting to know you. And, and it's just so beautiful when, when you just resonate with another person, you know, and, and, and you can feel that, that positive energy and that openness and... Uh, that, that humanity and at the same time that that spirituality uh, flowing from from another that you can just uh, be like uh, relaxed and I don't even know what I'm gonna respond but when you finish talking a million things came up and maybe one of them still is there or or something else uh, comes up at the end and I go oh yeah and and then the same thing happens maybe from your side and these conversations are just beautiful. We're gonna try to be more focused on the next segment uh, and go deeper into radionics, which you gave a, a beautiful overview and of the possibilities and kind of how it works. Uh, I I got this image, you know how when computers were were just starting, they had the uh, uh, room size computers that that printed like one page with a hole, and that was like, oh, we did it. And it feels like you talked about these IDF machines, which maybe we can get a little more, a little bit more into. And and you, I got like this, this uh, sense, uh, this uh, sense, you know, from from how you describe them. Like, oh, imagine in the future when this has been. I mean, you have a very tiny thing already. Imagine yeah. in the future when this is more normal, and people look back and say, oh, when we were old, oh, when I was a youngster, <laughs> <laughs> the ideas of machines were so large. <laughs> and, uh, and they had only one frequency. And so I can, I can totally, I, I really think this from the little that I know, but this intuition of mine, I can totally see that this radionics thing is, is, I don't know, it's the next thing, but it's like something that's going to be definitely very important, a very important ally in, in the future of, of a more conscious and more peaceful and harmonious humanity and more uh, free and happy. So I'm very happy to continue talking about it on the other side. Um, and yes, yeah, so please, Lindsay, uh, you already shared one, a few of your, of your links, but if you'd like to, to tell people one, one particular place where they can find your stuff and maybe uh, reach out to you or, or, or yeah, just, just bake, bake no bask in your energy sorry <laughs> bask in your energy please go ahead and, and share that <laughs> yes thank you um it's so awesome to be talking with you like you said it's a nice to have just natural flowing conversations about things that are so um beautiful and profound and i'm sure so many people resonate with as well and i always like to think about what people are receiving uh yeah. from this as well so we're always an appreciation of everyone out there who's listening uh or watching uh, I don't know if you do video actually, but uh, yeah, yes, yeah. you can go to rogueways.org, uh, which is the best place to see everything that I do or the link tree, which is link tree uh, slash Lindsay Sharman. Sharman is S-C-H-A-R-M-Y-N, Sharman. Uh, and so uh, I guess I have to spell Lindsay with the million ways you spell Lindsay too, but it's <laughs> L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. <laughs> but um, everything's there. I have that new audio book we were talking about. That's on Audible. You can find Sign Curve of Aeons there. You can also get the physical copies of it from me or on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or anywhere. My show, Rogue Ways and Middle Path are on every podcast app, as well as on Rockfin and YouTube and a couple other video places. Um, and I do teach those courses. You can find them. They're on Thinkific. You can link to them from my site at rogueways.org. I lead meditations twice a week at group meditations that we do. Um, I have an event coming up 
in September, I do it every equinox and solstice. Actually, it's called one day of brightness. So if you want to have a full day of this type of learning and conversation from really awesome people from around the world, then you can come to the one day of brightness event. And I'm on Twitter, Instagram, uh, at apotropaic soul. That's hard to spell, but I trust that you can find it. <laughs> if you want to go to the link tree or otherwise, you'll find all the things. Yeah, rogueways.org. That's mm. a beautiful, a beautiful place that you can find everything. Um, I, I don't know if I could even repeat your, your Twitter. <laughs> what, what was it again? It's apotropaic soul. Apotropaic wow. is uh, one of my favorite mean? words. It's uh, it, it means naturally imbued with or inherently possessing uh, resistance to evil. Wow, very good. I <laughs> love that. Apotropaic, very good. Well, um, and for myself, you can find me on Instagram at Atman Rafa and um, uh, patreon.com slash Rafa Martinelli, just my name. And uh, yeah, both links and my links will be on the description of this video. Um, I'm also very appreciative of everybody that's already joined the Patreon. I want to I, I want to, I'm going to have to, to learn more about how to, how to grow it, but because I, I want it, I want to share like, um, maybe I, I should try doing like free ones here in YouTube. And, and then like, if you're interested, I'm going to do more on Patreon, like, uh, not just meditations, but also like Akashic Records readings, like for groups or for like the energy of, 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 the, of the moment of the month or whatever. Um, I, I want to share more of that, you know, but something in, in my head says, yeah, but once you have the audience, then share it. And maybe it's like, share it. And, and uh, was that, that movie with the, with the Kevin Costner and the yeah, Field of Dreams? Yeah. Make it and they will come, whatever. Yeah. Maybe I should, I should be more, more like that. Um, but so, yeah, thank you everybody for being there. Uh, please check out Lindsay's show, uh, shows. And, uh, and yeah, and um, we'll see you on the other side. Bye bye.